Good morning, St. John's. It's great to be with you again today and thank you for joining us online for our service. Um, I hope that you will all feel connected through this. It's really difficult, isn't it, in this time of when we're all disconnected and in different places to feel connected, but I hope this shared experience will help us to feel connected. And as a reminder, we're doing communion today, so I'm hoping that you've got some bread and wine handy or some juice so that we can celebrate communion and even though we're in our separate homes that we share this experience. I'm going to read to you from Isaiah chapter 12. It says this, Sing to the Lord for he has done wonderful things. Make known his praise around the world. Let all the people of Jerusalem shout his praise for joy. For great is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. And we've got to believe that God through his holy presence, is living amongst us. And we're going to be led now in our worship. So Father, I want to pray that you would lead us now as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider
Father, thank you for that opportunity to worship however we participated in it. And we pray that as we have either sung or thought about the words or engaged in any way, that our lives would be filled even more with your holy presence. Amen. Friends, we're, we're, we're all hearing lots of different stories at the moment from around the world of how things are going. And uh, certainly for me this week, well, we've heard just this morning as we're recording this of someone we know who's been taken into hospital. And um, uh, we're very involved as a church family um, in funerals in our community. And so I'd love us to pray. And we're going to be led this morning by uh, the Hagar family in prayer. So I'm going to hand over to Paul and Daniela as they lead us in our prayer. So let's pray together. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this new day that you as the word were there at the beginning of creation and continue to sustain life today. Thank you, Lord, for the Easter hope of resurrection, that you've conquered death and that we can look forward to eternal life with you. We thank you for the signs of new life in spring, for the fresh leaves on the trees, for blossom and flowers and for bird song. Thank you that the social distancing measures seem to be starting to have an effect and that you, Lord, are present with us in our isolation, in our homes. Thank you for all the good responses to the current situation, the help being provided to neighbours, the dedication of key workers, and the response of churches and organisations such as Christians Against Poverty. We also pray for the many key workers, such as nurses, who risk their lives to care for the sick and elderly. We pray you be with them and their families at this time. Give them courage to keep giving their life-changing support to others. We also pray for the government. Give them hope and guidelines. We pray for all the government leaders that they will make the right decisions for our country. Furthermore, we pray you support those of us who are suffering with COVID-19. We pray you give them strength to fight through. We pray you stay with us in hospital. Let us take some time to think of people you know who need the Lord's help. We also pray for all the families and relatives who have lost loved ones. Please help them to feel your love and care during these times. Please also help all those people who are feeling lonely and isolated. Help them to know of you. Also help our economy with the jobs of many becoming redundant. Please help the government to serve our country with the money we already have. I pray that this difficult time may be a wake up call for many people that we may be led to see your creation suffering from our way of living and or lack of care and take action. That those who don't know you may seek you. That we who are called by your name may share the good news of Jesus with our neighbours and friends, even while physical distancing. We pray for Alpha courses and other ways of reaching out to people in need, that they may bring hope to those around us that many may turn to Jesus as their Saviour. Lord God, help us to live daily by the Easter hope you have given us by raising Jesus from the dead. Let your Holy Spirit be with us and strengthen us, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for leading us in our prayers. We're going to worship once more and then from worship we're going to go into communion and we've got Jane leading us with our communion service today. So let's worship again and then uh, go into communion with Jane. Thank you. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For 
the life that has been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong Forever God is faithful His love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on. His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise, sing with others in this place, maybe like me, you're on your own, but we are together in this scattered way as the Lord's family. I've been reading in the book of Acts, as the Spirit was poured out in the early church, how God's people gathered in their homes and broke bread with thankful hearts, and I invite you to join with me and do the same. Perhaps if you have the responses, you'd like to join in with those two. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And so with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise 
and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so I invite you to draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you, you may care to pause uh, the video while you take time to receive bread and wine or time to be with the Lord. Let's give our thanks to God together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Strengthen us in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. I really hope that you were able to engage in that communion service in some way. Let's stay in that prayerful place as we um, again are invited into worship and uh, led in another song as we reflect on the goodness of God together. So let's worship just one more time. Yeah. 
again. We're going to have our reading and Helen's going to read for us and then Ben is going to speak. Our readings from Luke chapter 8 verses 22 down through to verse 25. So if you've got a Bible handy now's the moment to grab it uh, as Helen reads that to us and then Ben encourages us from the Bible. Luke chapter 8 verses 22 to 25. Jesus calms the storm. One day Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the waves and they obey him. Well, if I could add my welcome to Mark's, it's great to be able to speak to you today. My name is Ben. And today we are asking the question, uh, how can I find peace when I'm fearful? And my hunch is that probably all of us have asked that question at one point in life. To feel scared is to be human, I think. There's not one person on the planet that um, hasn't gone through that experience, um, that feeling of worry. Uh, maybe the butterflies we get in our stomach, the, the sweaty palms, the, the sense of not being able to really get on with what we want to do in our days, the dis-ease within us that comes from the experience of fear. But as we look at our passage this morning from Luke's Gospel when we come to Jesus we find a different way to live, a different way to go about things and of course we are in a bit of a storm um, ourselves at the moment. I wonder what you might be fearful for. Uh, for me, if I'm honest, um, it's probably that uh, my wife is going back to work in uh, a few weeks time and she works in a hospital as a, a doctor. And so uh, there's all sorts of questions in my mind. How is that gonna end up? What if she gets um, the coronavirus in a serious way? What's, how are we gonna work it if she's isolated? Um, and we'll all feel 
uh, a sense of fear for those who are working on our, our front lines or those that we know who are particularly vulnerable um, at the moment. Uh, maybe for us it's the economic reality of what is going on. Um, job losses, uh, we're aware of the need to um, pay our mortgages and provide for our families perhaps and we've got all sorts of questions. Uh, uncertainty is uh, very often a catalyst for fear. But you know Jesus' desire for us is that we might find faith in the midst of storms and that with that faith we would find peaceful hearts within us, a new way to go through these things. And um, you know as we come to uh, our passage this morning, Jesus comes the storm and it comes in a, a section of Luke's Gospel where Jesus has been teaching. Um, we've just had uh, something called the Sermon on the Plain, Jesus' big talk on life in the Kingdom, a couple of parables and then Jesus says let's go to the other side of the lake and it's probably an area that the disciples hadn't been to before so they were already feeling a little bit uneasy about what was happening because it was a non-Jewish area they were going to minister in and as they go this storm rises we read in verse 23 that they sailed across Jesus settles down for a nap I just love that about Jesus Mr. Child and um, then it tells us a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. And what strikes me um, about this is that the disciples, many of them were fishermen and they would have spent hours and hours and hours on Lake Galilee. They'd probably been through loads of storms. It was known for its storms. But this was a storm that was unlike anything that they had experienced before. And for us at the moment, all that we are going through is unlike anything probably that we have experienced before. And we're really looking around wondering how do we navigate this? How do we um, uh, conduct ourselves? How do we arrange life uh, in a lockdown scenario? How do we do this? And um, what I love about the disciples is that in that um, sense of chaos, you can imagine them trying to get out the water um, as quickly as they can. Some of them are just clinging on to anything they can find as the boat turns this way and then that. And they're looking around and they're looking for Jesus. Uh, and that's always uh, a good place to start. And they, they come to Jesus and they come with this sense of weakness that they these were the these were the fishermen these are the people who were meant to know uh, how to do this thing how to sail across but actually they came in their weakness they came in vulnerability and they said master master we're gonna drown in other words they're saying don't you care that we're gonna drown and they come to Jesus with all their their questions almost their anger their confusion Jesus why aren't you doing something and maybe for us, we are um, in that place ourselves and we're invited to come to Jesus with our questions. The Psalms are prayers that are given to us to say to God and they are full of really honest questions. But what I love and I think is a lesson for us in the midst of our storms is that they came to Jesus and they asked for help. And in that place of um, vulnerability, in that place of openness, it allows the possibility for God to come in, his presence to come in and to change the situation. One of the books that we got given for Christmas was um, by the artist Charlie Mackesy. And uh, it's his book, The, the Boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. And there's this amazing, uh, simple but yet profound little cartoon of the boy asking the horse, what's the bravest thing that you've ever said? And the horse simply replies, help. 
And sometimes for us, we need that encouragement to come to Jesus and to ask for his help because when we do, it makes uh, all the difference. Uh, a little while ago, uh, a couple of years ago now, um, my wife and I, we went through a little bit of a difficult time, as many couples do uh, when we experienced a miscarriage. And um, I had been um, away in uh, South Africa on a little mission trip uh, immediately after it happened. And um, I was feeling really down about it, if I'm honest. It kind of come as a bit of a surprise. Um, it was hard being away from my wife. And um, uh, I came back actually from the trip a bit early. And I remember being on this plane and all sorts of questions going through my mind, a sense of um, disappointment, uh, a kind of sense of hope, not hopelessness, but a, a real deep asking God what was going on. And um, I remember I came back on a night flight and I just put some very simple worship music on and I asked God just to come and be with me by his spirit. And on that plane, I tell you, I had the most uh, significant experience of the love and the peace of God that I had had for such a long time. I was completely filled with his presence. My heart and my mind were just so at peace and I just kind of somehow knew that God had got it, that it was uh, gonna be okay. And you know I think that as we're looking for peace it it doesn't come in the form of a solution so much as it comes in the form of the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And when we know that within us, then we can have peaceful hearts. And so we come back to the story and Jesus is woken, uh, he stands up and he says, be still to the wind and the waves. And immediately there's this calm over the water and he shows his authority. He shows that the lives of the disciples are not ultimately in the hands of chaos or nature, but they're in the hands of a loving God. And then he invites them to uh, a life of faith. I don't think this is a rebuke when he says, um, where is your faith? I think it's an invitation, an invitation to put their faith in the hands of this loving God that they've just experienced. And so friends, for us, I want to invite us very simply as we seek to be people of peace, to be peaceful, uh, peaceful presence to those that we're with, um, to be people who share something of the love of Jesus with others uh, and to know that within ourselves. I want to encourage us to simply be with Jesus, to look to him at this time. One of the things that I found really helpful for my anxiety levels is um, to not look at my news app so much, to try not to, to watch the news on TV so often, um, but rather to try at least to come to God a little bit more in prayer, to be with him um, in the scriptures. And, and to be honest, a lot of the time it's just simply being with God. Uh, my mind, I don't know about you, but I find my mind is uh, finding it hard to concentrate on a whole lot uh, at the moment. And um, just inviting him to be with us um, each day and to put our faith in him can really make all the difference. So why don't we pray now? Why don't we pray that the Jesus that calmed the storm all those years ago he's alive and that he might come and calm the storms that might be in our hearts and minds at this time that we might be able to be people of peace for those that we meet this week let's pray father thank you thank you that you offer us a a different way to live thank you lord that we can know your peace within us because of Jesus. Thank you that, that Jesus is Lord over all, that he is the one in whom 
um, our lives are placed, uh, Lord, that the whole world is in his hands. And Lord, we choose today, we choose to trust in you for all the uncertainty that we might face uh, at this time. Uh, so Lord, come by your spirit, fill us now and give us new strength and a new perspective for this week. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. And um, uh, I hope that you feel connected by what we've done today as a church family. And I'd love to pray God's blessing upon us as we go into this next week. And don't forget, please send in your stories of what God has been doing in your life, that we can share those stories. We'd love to do that. I'd love to do some interviews with you online so that we can get some different faces in the service and hear different stories of what God has been about. So please do email me at stories at stjohnsealing.org.uk so that um, I can connect with you over those stories. But let's ask God to bless us now. Father, thank you for your goodness and grace in our lives. And I pray that as we go into this week, with all that it holds, that we would know your blessing and grace each and every day. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless, guys, and thanks for joining us.